Hey YouTube, it's Marty from the channel Budget Bug Out, and in today's video we're going to be talking about 10 different knives, pocket knives specifically, that are really, really underrated. Now there are underrated knives that are like the open L knives, where they're very popular, but you know, honestly they should be, <coughs> excuse me, they should be more popular than they really are, and there are different ways of carrying those knives, and I'll uh, leave links down below if you guys are curious about open L knives, but Honestly, these are sold in a lot of different stores anyway, so I can't really include those on the list. And on there are also a lot of knives that, in my opinion, are extremely overrated, and I'll get to those at some point. I'll do a video about those kind of knives. And I'll talk about this one, why I believe it's overrated later on in the video. But these knives I'm going to be talking about are the ones that just you really never hear about. And so if you guys are curious about other knives that are generally accepted in the knife community, then be sure you check out my other videos. I'll link those down below as well. So let's go ahead and get down to it, right? So first off, you can see this is from CRKT. Some of y'all might recognize this because I keep harping on this knife, how great it is. This is the Squid. And I'm gonna be starting this list off with knives that are budget friendly. So like five that are budget friendly and then five that are a little bit more expensive, closer to $100. So. This one that you see in front of you is, I think, what, $13, $14, give or take on Amazon. So, like I said, I'll be leaving links down below if you guys are curious about any of these. But the reason why I like this kind of a, a bulldog of a knife is kind of how I say it, describe this knife because it's small, it's stout, it's tough, is is because of all those reasons <laughs> and, and it's compact. It put You put this in your pocket, it has kind of a deeper pocket clip and so it's not going to uh, it's not going to really stick out of your pocket but whenever you're whenever you're carrying this around whenever you pull this out to use it uh, people aren't going to go run around you know in the office screaming and setting things on fire because you've got a knife you know nothing like that <laughs> and it's plenty ergonomic i wear medium to large size gloves depending on the brand and my hand fits just fine on this and it, like it, it slices just fine and I've got no issues with it. And in fact, I enjoy carrying it and it's never let me down. But yeah, this is the CRKT Squid. I think because of the body shape, it's called the Squid. But honestly, I think it should be called the Bulldog. <laughs> so moving right along, this one is from CRK, sorry, <laughs> from Kershaw rather. And unless you've watched me mention this like once or twice on my, in my videos, you've probably have never seen the Kershaw Eris. And in fact, I uh, have been mispronouncing it. I've been calling it the Eldris. But this knife is, as you can see, it's a flipper knife. It has the same uh, spring assist. I think it's called the Speed Safe. I think it's what the brand name is for Kershaw. And it's made famous in the Kershaw Leak. But the Kershaw Leak, which I think is also a great knife, but I think it's pretty widely accepted in the knife community. It's, it's around 50 bucks, and I think it's a great knife, and I highly recommend it. But if you're wanting to spend around half that, you know, a little more than half of what it is for the Kershaw Leak, actually, I think it's around 35-ish dollars, then I would go with this knife right here because this is honestly one of the best slicers of any of the Kershaw knives that I own. I think it's a great knife and I think it's built really, really well. So this is the Kershaw Eris knife. Moving on to another Kershaw knife, and this one very similar as far as I, it's very budget friendly, I think a similar price, and you know it springs out. It's got that torsion bar that the other Kershaws I showed you have. But the thing that separates this one, of course, is how lightweight it is. So if you look at this Almar uh, Falcon Ultra Light, but, um, but yeah, this, this collaboration between Almar and Kershaw, it has all the same things that you would want from uh, a knife the, of, of this type from Almar, where it's lightweight. It's not as lightweight, but it's still lightweight. And I really like this pocket uh, clip as well. So I think that's actually an improvement upon the original because it has that deep carry pocket clip and it's extremely comfortable and ergonomic and I don't know why this is not more popular than it is. So that is why it's on this list. Let's move on to the next one. So 
Going back again to CRKT. So they came out with this knife. I, uh, it's a home front from, it's kind of a Ken Onion design, but it has something that's known as a, um, like a field strip technology integrated into it. And yeah, it's, it's a great knife. It's a great system. So basically the way that it works, let me move this out of the way, is that whenever you move this gear, you just kind of turn it that way and then you kind of slip this over here and then you throw it down <laughs> that's how they do it at the trade show events oh maybe you're supposed to do that first and then rotate it but you know you guys get the you guys get the point so this is going to be great if you're someone who spends a lot of time in the outdoors maybe you're a hiker you're section hiking or through hiking or whatever and you're going to spend a lot of time in between facilities and a way of maintaining your knife. So this is a great technology for you, or if you're in the military and you know, you're down range, uh, this would be great. So it has that same technology in this knife. However, the home front, whenever I use the flipper on that, my finger rubs up against the handle right there. For that reason, I'm not a big fan of the design of the home front. I think it's overrated. And, but this knife has everything that you kind of know and love and pocket knife. It's very easy to open. It has a frame or correction, a liner lock. It also has a deep carry pocket clip. And yeah, it has that same technology, that field strip technology where you can maintain this in the field. What I want to see is this in orange so that you can actually see it if you were to put this down at your campsite or out in the woods or whatever. So really like this knife. This one is known as the HVAS and uh, once again this is from CRKT. Okay moving on to the next one it's the Emerson and Kershaw collaboration. This is known as the CQC which stands for close quarter combat 7k. Actually no it's not this is the actual Emerson itself and this is the, uh, the, the mini commander um, oh there it is the CQC 15 but you probably wouldn't have known that because this is it right here, the, the Kershaw and Emerson collaboration. Um, because this one you know, is around $200 and this one is around $35, it still has all the same features that you enjoy from an Emerson knife. It has an Emerson wave, so it, as you pull it out of your pocket, and as long as you pull it back, as you pull it out of the pocket, then it's going to deploy and it's a great self-defense knife as long as you're obeying your local knife laws, etc., etc. So great knife, it's great for self-defense. And if you're someone who is looking for a knife that you can you know, use to defend yourself in a last ditch effort to save your life, then these are great knives for you. But like I said, there's a price difference. And this one won best knife of the year in 2000 and something rather. <laughs> I think it was like a few years ago. Yeah, at the Blade Show event. So great knife, kind of still underrated. Uh, I think people kind of still overlooking this knife even though it has that accolade. Moving on to the next knife. And this is kind of getting towards the a little bit more expensive category. This one is from Benchmade. So those are all the budget knives. This Benchmade knife is known as the Presidio, and this is the original Presidio. So there's still some out there. Now Benchmade sells the Presidio 2, but I really like this one, honestly, a little bit better. So you've seen the Contego, and this one has a, a glass breaker in the bottom, so that it does differ from that in that way, because this one doesn't have a glass breaker but the ergonomics, the feel of it is pretty much this, very similar in any ways as the Contego. And then here it is next to the Griptilian. And it's, in my mind, the Presidio is kind of a mix. It takes the best parts of both of these and molds it into one. Now the Presidio 2, I'm sure is a great knife, but honestly, this one is still my favorite knife to carry from Benchmade, even over the Griptilian and the uh, Presidio or the Contego. If you guys are kind of looking for another Benchmade or even your first Benchmade, I would really recommend this knife because I, I really like the ergonomics. These uh, diamond patterns right here it helps you give it really good grip on the knife, and, and it's just a really excellent knife. It's very smooth to open, and it's. It has that access lock that Benchmade is is known for. So, 
<laughs> of course, because of my angle that I'm closing this, it's uh, being difficult on me. But yeah, I really like this knife. This is the Presidio from Benchmade. Moving on to a Kaiser knife. And this is a knife that, honestly, I just got in the mail and I just been using it the, this past week. And I really, really enjoy it. And so this is known as the Sheepdog and it has S35VN premium bleed steel. And it, well, you can see it. It kind of has a really cool shape to it. And um, it just, it's just very aesthetic pleasing of a knife and if you're maybe looking for one that isn't so big because you can see like I said reference of my hand right here there is a smaller version out there as well this is basically the the mini sheepdog I believe is what it's called so the things I really like about this knife other than the aesthetics is the ergonomics so it's extremely smooth I will show you uh, the sheepdog that the mini one it does it kind of comes across as a little too small in my hands I don't know maybe it's just maybe it's just me it just looks a little too small um, but it's still lightweight and easy to carry and it has g10 handles whereas this one has titanium handles uh, but I, I really like this knife if you were looking for kind of a classy looking knife and that still does a really great job slicing then um, maybe you should go with the sheepdog I will say that it's not as great of a slicer as something like a, a zero tolerance knife or at least some of them because it has a little bit of a thicker spine even though yeah this, there was a swedge right here just kind of keep that in mind but it is a beautiful knife and it's a, a real pleasure and i'm smile i smile every time i use it so and that's pretty much all you can ask for when it comes to knives right moving on to another knife also from honestly from kaiser and this one i got from a battle box this is known as the sea lion and i'm not sure <laughs> the reason for the name but yeah i really like it and it's also ergonomics and it's pretty lightweight as well but yeah if you're looking for a knife that's kind of out of the norm and that, a knife that's going to last you for a while you don't mind spending a little bit more then i would recommend these two knives from kaiser by the way both of these knives do have that that insert in that frame lock that is going to be the same steel as the steel in the in the blade that way the titanium isn't going to be worn away each time that you flip it last couple knives another flipper knife the last flipper knife and this one is from uh, bastion and this is made out of d2 steel and i forget what the name of this knife is i'll have to annotate it but yeah it's, is this a knife that is not really known in the knife community whatsoever because BattleBox, I think, worked on this knife kind of as an exclusive, and, but this knife does not have the, the kind of issues that I was expecting where it's going to have some sort of a, a rocking side-to-side -side blade play. But I will say that probably over time, though, that after flipping this, it's probably going to have issues that those Kaisers won't because this does not have that uh, steel insert in here. But other than that, day-to-day -day usage of this knife this is actually one of my more favorited flipper knives and i carry this sometimes uh, whenever i would have carried my zero tolerance knife i carry this one instead maybe it's because i favor my zero tolerance a little bit more but nonetheless this is an extremely underrated knife and i think you guys should be aware of it uh, moving on to the last but certainly not the least knife and this is from Hogue and before we turn away I want to say that this I think is one of the best uh, tactical knives that are out there now I know that's a bold statement because you know the Recon 1 has kind of uh, been like the go-to for a lot of people including myself and I might have even upgraded my Recon 1 to one that I don't even think fits on <laughs> fits in the frame very well but the, the reason why I like this so much is, once again, the ergonomics, the aesthetics, and and I really like, even though this is going to be more ex, a slightly more expensive than the Recon 1, the Recon 1 now retails at about $99, uh, but this this knife, this which is known as the Hogue EX-01, is honestly one of my favorite knives, partially because of the pocket clip, because how well it stays in the pocket, how easily it goes in the pocket, and how it doesn't have a hot spot at, at all. So you can hold this as, as tight as you want, and you're really not going to get any sort of mark 
on your skin or whatever. But this is honestly, this, they need to patent this or something because this is a great design. Also, you don't have to worry about disengaging a liner lock or a frame lock or moving something out of your hand. It has this button right here and it swings closed so you don't have to worry about your knife biting you, which mine has done from time to time, as perhaps yours has as well, if you're uh, someone like myself who owns a lot of knives, but extremely comfortable. I think my favorite part is this design right here, which not only makes it easy to get the knife out without causing blisters, but whenever you're using this knife, it's it just locks into hand and where your fingers ride on this G10 right here, um, it's just gonna lock into place. And if you're someone who's in the military or whatnot, then this might be a, a good knife for you. And it doesn't make a lot of noise opening and closing, um, as you can probably hear. Whereas something like the Recon 1, which are used by Navy SEALs, makes a little bit more noise. All right, guys, so these are my 10 recommended knives for those of you who are looking for something new. So maybe you've seen my other videos where I, I say, these are the best knives in the knife community uh, as recommended by every single person. Well, this video are just knives that in my personal experience are honestly as good, if not better than a lot of those knives. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you guys are interested in these knives, as always, links in the description box down below. Y'all stay safe out there and remember, it pays to be prepared. God bless and have a happy new year.